Prayer and meditation calls forth the soul's wisdom to embrace the journey of life, knowing with God all things are possible. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service, and I now ask that you join with me and please rise to sing hymn number 434, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Please remain standing for the prayer of invocation, followed by all praying the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Father, Mother, God, Infinite Spirit, as we assemble here today with grateful hearts filled with love and the anticipation of embracing the wisdom, the love, and the teachings of the Master Teacher Jesus, that we may truly open our hearts and our minds and become that which we desire to be, to walk our soul's journey, fulfilling our destiny, and demonstrating to others that yes, we are human beings with trials and tribulations as we face what goes on within the physical realm of life and trying to live a balanced spiritual life. That when we have within us the ability to rise above that which we perceive to be and allow the divine to shift the waters of emotions around us. When we settle within that place that is where we truly are meant to be, we will see the truth in what is, not that which is perceived at the surface level. So let us gather to seek that wisdom today with that open mind and that open heart and let us affirm the fullness of all that we are physically, mentally, and spiritually. <coughs> and let us invoke that as we pray the prayer that the Master Teacher Jesus taught the original disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture today is Psalms 23, and the title of our lecture is Little Pieces of Light. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to rest in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely thy goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May Spirit bless the reading of the scripture. Little pieces of light, darkness, and personal growth is God's gift to each of us for the purpose of achieving our soul's journey. We cannot understand and walk in the light until we understand darkness. They are the opposing poles of the same vibration and exist simultaneously in our lives at all times. The same as love and hate or hot and cold. However, darkness comes in many forms and is not an easy visitor that brings with it diminishedness and disorder threatening our survival, spiritually and physically. Webster defines darkness as closed, hidden, not easily understood, obscure, gloomy, hopeless, entirely or partially without light. This description hardly touches the human experience of darkness because we each take it in individually in our own ways. However, the darkness in the human heart also includes lonely, shattered, dread, anxious, forlorn, 
despairing, discouraged, numb, grief-laden, damaged, empty, bleak, fearful, traumatized, stumbling, and aimless emotions within the individual. And the dark part of that is sometimes we allow ourselves to sink so low into these emotions that we actually become that emotion and therein lies the trouble of staying in that vibration. The land of darkness might be any of the following. A time in which the energy was forced a time in which the energy and focus of life is almost completely funneled into the physical emotion of physical pain. Extreme pain for in extended periods of time can do that to all of us. An experience of being buried in deep sorrow or grief. A discouraging and empty inner sojourn where nothing seems valuable are worthwhile in our lives. A stage of spiritual desolation in which there is no sense of God's presence and little or no sense or desire to experience things of the spirit. A battle of indecision and struggle where the unknown and fears of the future press painfully upon decisions that need to be made in the individual life. A fog-like state when life is confusing, unclear, and seemingly impenetrable. A situation with evil and atrocity which threatens to overwhelm and annihilate. An excruciating time of hopelessness in which one feels paralyzed or powerless to alleviate the pain of self or of another. An ongoing siege of negativity which brings with it constant frustration, irritation, and dissatisfaction. No one can say whose darkness is the greatest, but everyone experiences darkness from time to time, just as Job did. We all long to have life return to the way it used to be, or the way we have longed for it to be. Psalms 23, verse 2 states, He, meaning God, Spirit, the Lord leads me beside still waters. Waters symbolize emotions in, a, in the many modes of expression. Water in one of its faces represents negativeness, the individual who allows him or herself to become negative to the good finds oneself uncertain and unstable in mind and often in the body becomes so submerged in the waters of neg negation that the physical condition begins to become ill. We begin to embody that which we embrace and hold on to. Weak sympathy with error and the results of error helps to produce this condition. The violence and destruction happening in the world can also bring darkness Discouragement and desolation can easily find those who open their hearts to people who have been victims of atrocities and abuse, even if it is a perceived condition that is not real. The realization of collective evil, which is error, which is nothing more than living out of harmony with God's laws, which is natural law can fall like a heavy block, like, like a heavy black cloud upon the person who cares about what happens to this world and the people that inhabit this world. When anyone accompanies another's pain with compassion, there's bound to be a taste of darkness. This is life's way of inviting us to grow. Whether or not the darkness is a gift for us depends upon us of course, our attitude towards it and how we respond to it. For example, 
When the terrible flooding of 1993 happened out in the Midwest, there was a 75-year-old woman who lived alone and described how she sat watching the river rise around her house. She said it was the loneliest, longest day of her life. She felt despair. And during the process, finally the neighbors joined together to place sandbags around her house. She described how one of them, whom everyone in the community talked about as the local prostitute and shunned, was the most concerned and helpful during this treacherous time. The older woman had never known her neighbor very well, but she welcomed the care and kindness offered to her. So when people show up in our lives and they demonstrate kindness to us, we can see beyond the other things of their life. When, if we don't have that opportunity, that need to experience them on a different level, we might never give that individual the often opportunity to demonstrate that to us. These little pieces of light and the darkness of personal growth, it's God's way of letting us know that our needs are always met and that the Lord bids welcome to those who come with weary spirit seeking rest. Those who come with troubles that are too much and those who come with heart with hurt hearts and are afraid, those who come with hope in our hearts, those who come with anticipation in our steps, those who come proud and joyous, those who are seekers of a new faith, those who come to probe and to explore, and those who come simply to learn, all are welcome. Whatever we are, whatever we Won't. Whenever we are on our journey, the Lord, our shepherd, allows us to rest before leading us beside the still waters, which the still waters represent pent up emotions stored at soul level that we may process, release, and forgive. We must forgive ourselves and others to restore our own soul, that we may embark upon paths of righteousness, knowing that though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we should never fear evil, for God is always with us. It is our rod and our staff, the wisdom and strength that is there to comfort us when we are open to receive. John Halifax wrote, we cannot eliminate the so-called negative forces or of, of affirmative emotions. The only way to work with them is to encounter them directly, enter their world and transform them. Then they become manifestations of wisdom. Our weaknesses become our greatest strengths, the source of our compassion for others and the basis of our own awakened nature. When darkness descends upon the human heart, we, we spend most of our time doing battle with it rather than befriending it, seeing what the gift is that it might offer us if we have the courage to look beyond. We can actually ask, where in my past did I sow that seed? Where did I nurture this? What was the need or the fear, the emotion at that time that I need to learn to understand and to feel the other side of that pain? These things are exemplified in Mark chapter 14, verse 13, which states that the disciples were to recognize the man in whose home they were to eat at the Passover by his carrying of a pitcher of water. Meaning that we should meet the error of thought at the weakest point in consciousness. The error of thought to be met in this case was designated as Judas, one of the disciples who was possessed of a devil. 
the devil or Satan signifies the mass of thoughts that have been built up in consciousness through earthly experience and crystallized into what may be termed human personality or carnal mind. So we create our own devil. It is not a creation of God. So if we created it, then we can uncreate it at will if we have that desire and care enough about our own self to do that work. Another name for the devil is sense consciousness. All the thoughts in one that fight against and are adverse to truth. All those thoughts belong to that state of not mind known to metaphysicians as the devil. Perceived evil is conceived in error thinking, nothing more or nothing less. So if we can change our thoughts, change our mind, we can recreate our reality or transform it into that which we desire to be, to rise above, to let the water flow beneath our feet as demonstrated by Jesus the Christ. This means that Jesus had discovered that he had at one point in his character that was not yet spiritualized by the power of the word or the regeneration thought by the Father. There are times that we all fall short so we need to revisit those places because it is not, this doesn't really fit here, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. When there was the crucifixion and the resurrection, when Mary came to Jesus and was going to embrace him and he told her, do not yet touch me for I have not transcended, means that he had not yet fully embodied that vibration and to be detracted by a lower vibration would reduce that vibration and we'd have to go work through it again. So this is what we encounter on a daily basis. It's not just once a year or once in the whole creation of the world. Jesus said on a former occasion that his disciples, faculties of being, were all clean through the power of the word except this one. So Jesus had to meet in the Judas faculty, the reaction of an error thought that was working there from the personal or the adverse side of existence. So if this could happen to the master teacher, do you find it abnormal that it happens in your life? So don't crucify yourself daily, but move beyond it, change it, and get on with life itself. The living water in John chapter 4 verse 10 signifies the inspiration of spirit, also life, and in Revelations 22, 17 states, he that will, let him take the water of life freely. It's always there if we can find our way to accept it. Sometimes in those states of negativity, error thinking, evil, the devil, we don't see ourselves as worthy, so therefore we sit back and think, well, we go back to other ways of thinking that God will do it for me. It's the God within you that has given you the strength and the courage and the wisdom. And he will, God will allow us to experience everything to the depth and pain that we needed to give us that reason to change. The six water pots of stone in John chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, are the six nerve centers in the body, which are filled with the water of life or nerve fluid representing the abundance of vital energy that may be generated from a union of the I am, spiritual thought, with the water of life, our nerve fluid, and the various centers of the organism, with the organism being the human body. All these transformations take place within, not out here, and until we become that living sanctuary, we do not embody this. With every thought, we are setting this nerve fluid into a state of action. And it is determined whether it's negative or positive, error or good, based upon the energy, the thought that we're sending out 
with that. Just like our prayers, sometimes we think we're sending forth very positive prayers for people, but we're in such a state of energy ourselves that we don't realize that that which we're sending forth can be negative. With every thought, we are setting this nerve fluid into a state of action. So let us be mindful of the energy that we're sending forth with, because it is going to go out, do its work, and then it's going to come back and abide with us because we are the creation, the creator. Any kind of darkness can call us, push us, nudge us, and urge us on to the path of inner growth. Darkness can wake us up and stir up questions in us that we'd rather not face, such as, how did this pattern of my behavior influence my life? Whom or what have I taken for granted? Have I been attentive to the deepest longings of my own soul? What do I really want to do with my life? How will I make choices for my future from this point forward? What and who do I want to be with me as I continue my life journey? Because as we grow, we will find there will be some that we will have to leave behind because we can't carry them with us on the journey. These are the things we need to discern if we are to dine at the cosmic table of life, prepared in the presence of our enemies. Our enemies are our thoughts, hurts, and wounds that we have not been able to work through. And they abide with us because we nurture them daily. We choose not to give them up, so therefore we must dine with them. But when our heads are anointed with oil, our cup running over, we know that goodness and mercy will follow us everywhere as we dwell in the house of the Lord, right here, right now on earth, in physical form, not in some distant time and a distant place in the future that is called heaven or hell. The difficult thing about darkness as an essential part of life is that we can know this intellectually, but we run from it emotionally. We turn our backs and we walk away. When we can stay in truth, oh God, I have been to my inner place where shadows are as dark as death. I have been to the land of gloom where my security shudders and my dreams are coffined. I want to believe and trust that this land of desolation contains a gift of growth for me. Convince me, assure me it is so. Wrap this truth of transformation firmly around my questioning heart as I kneel at the altar of my heart in a place called the skull where the final overcoming takes place. And again, it is not a distant land. The skull is the part of the physical body that houses our consciousness, which functions through the physical brain. So I embrace the transformation of consciousness within my being as little pieces of light penetrate the darkness of my soul. From this state of consciousness, our prayer and our mission statement becomes, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is by pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. That does not mean a physical death. It means a death of the things that have held us back, that we may truly move forward and achieve being at its fullness. 
little pieces of light, darkness, and personal growth is God's gift to each of us for the purpose of achieving our individual soul's journey. May Spirit bless you.